I had a friend ask me the other day, Kobe, why is it that my ears hurt when I'm ascending or descending in an airplane? I think this is a fascinating question because the answer tells us quite a bit about how airplanes age. Let me explain. First and foremost, in order to get to the heart of our question, we need to talk about cabin pressurization. Simply put, airplane cabins are pressurized in order to keep you alive. The air at typical cruising altitude is so thin that without a supplemental supply of oxygen, you begin to experience hypoxia, a condition in which your body is starved of oxygen. With the onset of hypoxia comes a substantial decrease in cognitive and motor functions, and within just a couple of minutes will lead to unconsciousness and ultimately death. Lucky for us, airplane cabins are pumped full of oxygen in order to prevent this. As air passes through the engines, some of it is siphoned from the compressor stage, cooled, and then pumped into the cabin for your enjoyment. Now, for all intents and purposes, it is this pressurization process that causes your ears to pop. Commercial aircraft are typically only pressurized with the amount of oxygen you'd find at about 8,000 feet, substantially thinner than the air at sea level. As you ascend to 8,000 feet, the difference in atmospheric pressure in the cabin and the air that's still trapped inside of your skull becomes more and more pronounced. Gases tend to move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure, so the gases in your head try to escape, pushing on your eustachian tubes and causing discomfort. Okay, well that's all fine and dandy, but I can hear you saying, well Kobe, why are airplane cabins pressurized to only 8,000 feet? Wouldn't better cabin pressurization alleviate these symptoms? Yeah, it would. Not only that, but it would also help with jet lag as well as the thin air on board a plane is a key reason why you feel so groggy when you step off a long flight. But pumping more oxygen into the cabin really isn't much of an option when you consider how planes are built. The fuselage of a plane is typically constructed of thin sheets of aluminum alloy, riveted together by thousands of fasteners. When a plane is in flight, the oxygen that's pumped in pushes against the inside walls of the aircraft. This ultimately causes areas of stress at these joints, and even makes the malleable skin of the aircraft stretch a little bit. Each time a plane flies, this process repeats itself, putting considerable stress on the fuselage over time. And ultimately, there is a finite number of times that a plane can be pressurized before metal fatigue compromises safety. As a result, an airplane's age is typically measured in pressurization cycles, not years. For example, a Boeing 747 has a lifespan of about 35,000 pressurization cycles, equating to, on average, 27 years worth of commercial service. If a plane were to be pressurized to more than this 8,000 foot standard, metal fatigue would set in much quicker and the plane would have to be grounded much sooner. Now, there have been some cool technological advancements in recent years that will allow for better cabin pressurization moving forward. You've probably heard of the 787 Dreamliner and the A350 XWB, the two newest clean sheet jets from aircraft titans Boeing and Airbus. Each manufacturer boasts that their respective jet can be pressurized to 6,000 feet worth of oxygen, rather than the 8,000 foot standard. They managed to do this because each jet's fuselage is built primarily of carbon composite materials. The use of this material requires fewer rivets, and the material itself does not suffer from metal fatigue. Ultimately, this means the fuselage is more robust in the face of constant pressurization and depressurization. So if you're looking for a more comfortable ride, look to book a flight on one of these two new jets. Now this video was a bit of a change of pace from my typical aviation business analyses. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought, and if you'd like to see these kind of videos more often. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.